It was time. The enemy was defeated. Across a dozen star systems, we had fought for nearly a decade. Millions of our people's blood poured out to conquer a species who had so dramatically entered the galactic stage. They had overcome several other conquering races. It was true. Species we had feared to face had succumbed, in the end, to their martial might. Yet it was we who stood, proudly, on the compressed sand of our home world, awaiting the arrival of our enemy's envoys. Twelve systems had been decimated by the war, all of them valuable assets we were sorry to have seen destroyed, each holding a precious, habitable world with dense, acidic atmospheres, precious heat and fire, where we could plant our native mosses and grow our iron snails. Garden worlds. The humans had been bombing the first with comets to terraform it, they said, when our scouts discovered the same star system and claimed it. They had protested, but our claim was clear. The system contained no human-compatible worlds. No worlds of soft winds and water. No. Just one with all the conditions for our harsh life. We are Death Worlders. We own all Death Worlds. The humans were trying to soften and destroy one such pure planet, and our outrage and rightness was clear. We waged war upon the soft worlders, and in fairness they fought bravely, and fiercely, with fast attack ships flanking behemoth battleships, cruisers of many sorts striking our rear areas, yet our will prevailed. We drove back the battleships with bullet craft, a warrior strapped inside a tungsten pylon with the most powerful engine ever mounted on a single seat craft. Even battleship armour cracked and breached when rammed at 2% of light speed. Our own battleships fought too, matching broadsides with theirs, and as they died, they turned and ran the enemy. Our empire of ten worlds matched them battle for battle, and in the end, as they fell back from the now burning systems they had been terraforming and colonizing, we knew they had broken. We sent our remaining battleship to their home system, bleeding air and shredding armor scales, and as it moved into orbit of the habitable world, the second from their dim yellow star, we saw how they had become so weak. What should have been a virtual mirror of our own home was wet and cold, covered in green and blue. Hints of its true nature remained, however, and we reminded the humans that weakness meant death by bombing their home world back into its true form. Surrender was demanded and the humans agreed. Armistice, they called it. They were sent on voice in a month to formally end the war in our favour. The battered, victorious warship returned home, passing the industry around the third most planet, where they had clearly been mining the easy-to-walk-on planet for resources for their broken war machine. Under our agreement, we didn't destroy it. Their industries would serve us with tribute soon. Now... The thick cloud cover broke above us, the human vessel approaching to land near us. It shone, the sulfuric acids of the clouds having polished the hull, revealing no weaknesses in its structure. And after hovering on jets of compressed carbon dioxide, it landed. It was a peculiar vessel in many ways. Even we ensured our atmospheric craft were sealed tightly, as high speed through the clouds would wear away the internal components and us. However, this craft appeared unfinished, as if its builders could have completed the outer hull, but had chosen not to. A further sign of the near collapse the enemy had suffered. They could not afford to finish even a diplomatic craft. After several moments, a hatch whined, opening to form a ramp, and two figures within moved down it. Both were squat, blocky-looking, made of metal and dense plastics. We already knew that humans were too weak to survive our atmosphere, so protective suits were expected. Our selected leader opened her hands in welcome, claws displayed in superiority, and waited. Greetings, superior beings. We are the envoys of humanity. We humbly present our surrender document for your approval. The left envoy held out his manipulators, presenting a slab of shining yellow. Inscribed on it, in tiny edged print, was the terms and conditions of the human surrender. 
Our leader took the slab and stumbled. While the crowd rumbled, they recovered and hefted the slab to look over the text. She nodded and set the slab on a block of stone two attendants rushed over with. After some discussion, a ceremonial blade was brought out and she inscribed her name onto the metal, growling at the effort. The envoys waited patiently and as their turn arrived, they extended a single digit each. There was a faint hissing and a billow of noxious reddish smoke as they signed and stepped back. The slab was examined, incredulous voices raised. The envoys had excreted an acid from their digits to sign their names into the metal. Metal that had been impervious to the sulfuric acid of the atmosphere. Perhaps they were not as soft as had been previously thought. They spoke once more. We, representatives of the human race, formally surrender to you in the name of Venus of Sol, the world you restored to his natural state by altered bombardment. This ends the state of war between our species, and hopes someday will lead to greater prosperity and friendship between us. The envoys gestured in appeasement, and the leader bared her fangs and claws in dominance, and the surrender ceremony was completed. They retreated to their vessel, moving inside and taking off, while our leader turned to walk back to her burrows. For the rest of us, watching as the human vessel took off, there was pride. We had won and defeated the humans, even if it meant our empire was fractured and falling into civil war with the loss of our warships, our industries, shattered by over-demand for fuel, weapons and food. Five of our colony wars were gone. Every adult killed in battle aboard ships now destroyed. The remainder were growing beneath the strains of housing, the young and the elderly, starvation and disease reaching even here. On Earth, the Office of External Affairs was humming with busy voices and the buzz of electronics. There was, however, a sense of jubilation as the Chief of Office leaned back in his chair. Alright people, we did it. The Vusians have signed, the robots appear to have put the frightness on the locals, the war is over. The terraforming experiment is over, officially. The Office of Planetary Management has agreed that the Venus experiment was a total failure, and continuing to experiment with exoworlds was pointless. Unfortunately, we now have to help these people rebuild. They need a bunch of prime real estate for their species, and their empire is in shambles. I want plans drawn up for ways to supply the maid. Preferably make it look like tribute. But we need to dose every scrap of food with vulcian compatible antibiotics and nutritional boosters. We don't want them rebuilding a battle fleet, but the Office of Defense says they can spike the Vulcian guns without them noticing. Now we have the locations of their shipyards where they want iron delivered. Might help future relations to start a campaign to appreciate their culture and art, if they have any. If they don't, then we need to get them to start thinking about comforts. They're a class 10, like us, just way less biodiversity than we had to deal with, and a lot more environmental directing their evolution. So start thinking about buying whatever mining technology they use. It's got to be impressive. He paused, looking around. Eyebrow raised for questions, but already teams were forming up to address the problems presented. He smiled and clicked his antique desk toy. Contact fleet would move back to his exploration role. Battle fleet hadn't even seen the enemy, but would quietly slide back into the shadows. And tribute fleet would get rolling would already be moving if his people knew their business. And 8,000 human colonies and five separate governments will let out a quiet sigh and go back to ignoring the old sector. And all it had cost him to snap a grain fret like a dry branch was a favour with the Planetary Management Office and Kessas with Home System Defence to let the Xenos nuke a failed terraforming experiment.